strike of a light bulb. I just air it out and leave with the mic broke. Your micro, I'm hard body like Tyco. Heavy metal Chevys with nitro. Addicted to the vapors of paper. Hypnotic to the thirst of pulling off criminal capers. I know the cocaine crackery stinks, but that's what it is. Surrounded by the khakis and mints. We move. And you got the suck cannon. Good for I you. did. Uh, I, I kept running out of ammo. I thought, well, I might as well just have the suck cannon then. Yeah, that was an interesting story that I just told about getting the suck cannon. I'm, <laughs> I'm, re I'm really glad I took that time. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to go back and cut that out later and then insert, like, just farting. That's pretty good. Yeah. Everybody likes farting, right? I'm really liking this battlefield. I mean, it's so amazing how much we were able to do with this one section of environment art. Especially given that we can't have more than six enemies on screen at a time. Yeah. But it feels like there are hundreds of enemies on screen here. Maybe dozens. Let's go with dozens. Like, I don't I don't remember exactly how it was wired up. I mean, hopefully if we ever get Jared, he'll be able to talk about this sort of stuff. About how oh, uh, I, I had a little bit more to do with it because uh, Sean was wiring them up. He was using the, uh, the system. And, <laughs> and it was... Uh, so... We should know that designers at Insomniac don't script. Right. Uh, that's, at least that's they didn't at the time. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, on on Ratchet and Three, we did not have the capability to script. All we could do was lay down entities, splines, things like that, and then hook them up to each other to do what the programmers told them to do. Uh, so Sean had to had to script. All of these individual waves and the be the, you know the what the enemies are supposed to do without using scripting. So he just had these <laughs> endlessly connected chains of mobies. I mean, it rigging up one battlefield mission would take him a week. Wow, really? Just just to do the waves for one of these missions, polished. Uh, it was really hard, and I might be underselling how difficult it was. Uh, I'd, I'd have to ask Sean to to tell for sure. Um, what's interesting is the uh, uh, the system for the, the, that, that kind of pseudo scripting system that, that we use to script all these things were also used for any, any time in the game where we have an NPC follow you uses the same system. Oh, really? So making a guy follow you like Skid McMarks later in the game or the Galactic Rangers or that uh, t just took forever. It was really, really hard. And that's the end of that story. So did you have to wire any of these up yourself, or was it really just uh, sitting next to Sean and listening to him curse the world? I had to wire Skid to run in uh, the underwater level. I see. So I did have to deal with the system a little bit, and I knew how hard it was. But uh, the thing is, is I don't know if there was a better way to have constructed the system given the constraints of the game. Like... Well, again, uh, it was the constraints of our tools. And yeah. when, the, when we were using Amaya, we couldn't do that kind of stuff in the way we had our Maya tools set up. And to go back to what we were talking about is only now are we really building up our own tools chain that would allow us to do that kind of stuff in the future. Yeah. Amen, brother. Oh, come on. Die, die, die. I'm getting a little better at not dying like an idiot. That's uh, pretty good. Yeah. Suck cannon. Suck. Suck away. How are you enjoying that lock strafe? Oh, it's perfect, dude. Oh, man. I don't know how we played the last fucking game. So how did, how did we come across with the idea... Because lo was lock strafe even an option in Ratchet and Clank 2? No. Because no. we just had strafing. Right. So how did we come... How did, in design, you come up to that sort of approach of take making that step from a strafe mode to a straight-up lock strafe mode? I I honestly don't remember. I think uh, I think we'd have to have like Corey or uh, or Algaier on to talk about that because I I had practically nothing to do with it. Oh shit! I'm supposed to be taking down the bolts. Uh, what what were we talking about? Oh right. Um, we're talking about lock strength. Yeah, uh, I know it was a huge problem because. We wanted to change the controls for lock strafe because the experience in lock strafe is. Uh, I don't know if I'd say better, but it's certainly tighter. Like It lets it, you play a more action-y run-and-gun style. 
Exactly. And and that's what we wanted to get to in Ratchet. We wanted uh, one one big disadvantage of the non lock strike mode is you it's not easy for you to aim up and down. Right. Uh, the main way that you aim up and down without complete camera control like this is by uh, jumping, right? And we couldn't rely on that as as at least not as much as if you know if you had the ability to aim up. Uh, so I think for a while we we experimented with making this the default mode. And people who had played the game before just hated it. Uh, they wanted their old controls back. They didn't like learning the new controls. So we put it in as an option. The other reason it was really necessary to to get for this game was multiplayer. Yes, that's right. Um, we wanted we haven't even touched on multiplayer yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was a whole other bag of, uh, bag of worms. Whole other ball of wax. Whatever. <laughs> You couldn't even just go with can of worms. You had to go with a completely different. Well, I went with metaphor. the ball instead of the worms. Uh, maybe that was unwise. But yes. It, can you? Yeah, it, yeah. Can you take it, this over? I need to survive. It, I mean, it is a different game in Lock Straight versus um, versus standard third person controls. And I think yeah, like this was definitely at the point where it was kind of weird. And I don't know if other people felt this way. But when you hear people talking about Ratchet and Clank at this point, when it came to Up Your Arsenal and Deadlocked, people were still calling us a platformer. And they we were 100% not a platformer at this point. We had become a shooter, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, especially uh, in Lockstrafe mode. In Lockstrafe mode, it's barely a platformer. Now, it played to our strengths a bit, though. Uh, like, we won, we won awards... Because we were in the platformer category, but they were, it was kind of unfair. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Like, we would win best platformer in a year, but we would be up against, you know, uh, robots and, uh, uh, you know, a DreamWorks game, right? So, not to disparage those, but it's not stiff competition. <laughs> As opposed to being up against actual shooters like Halo and Army of Two, which we never would have had any opportunity to win as a kid's game. Right, exactly. But yeah, you're right. We were we were always perceived as a platformer, even though we were more shooterish. Especially by the time we got to this game. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you still played in third person mode, I can see why you would feel like it was still a platformer. But once you're in lock strafe mode, I mean, it's it's a third person shooter at that point. Yeah, and yeah, um, definitely. And the lock strafe controls are just better for a shooter. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I know I switched to them uh, late. I was one of the late adopters of Lock Strafe. I, I couldn't get away from using... Even when I was playing multiplayer, I was using the regular controls. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Um, I was uh, unusual in that I actually could compete in multiplayer <laughs> without having the, the Lock Strafe controls. But generally speaking, it just wasn't possible to compete without the, the Lock Strafe. I need you to get that shield system back online. Yes, sir. We're on it. Oh, yes, Tony. This is this is mine. This is yours. Yes, the Are laser... Are we finally going to have a Mike Stout special section for Ratchet & Clank 3 Up Your Arsenal developer commentary? Now, I want to apologize to our listeners a little bit in advance because I don't think this game is going to be as painful for me as the last <laughs> game. And I think my pain was at least part of the enjoyment of... It was oh. for me. I definitely enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can still keep this funny and entertaining, even though I did way fucking better work in this game than I did in the last game. Uh, this, actually, this segment was uh, what, what made Mark Cerny give me the, the, the best backhanded compliment I've ever gotten. Uh, did I ever tell you about this? I don't believe so. Uh, so... Mark was playing the refractor segment uh, at this on on Ratchet Three. Uh, have we talked about Mark Cerny before? Should we intro him? Uh, sure. Let's intro him. I don't think we've talked to him about him at length. So, so Mark Mark Cerny uh, is is a uh, I guess an industry legend is probably a good way to put it. I think that's like, fair. He he's been around for since the video game industry existed. He worked on Sonic Two. He worked on uh, uh, Marble Madness. He was the executive producer at Sony when Insomniac started. Uh, sorry, at uh, Universal when Insomniac was with them making uh, Disruptor and the Spyro games. That's 
Cerny also has a very close relationship with Sony in general. Uh, yes. In terms of yeah. working on the PlayStation hardware and things like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, a lot of the things that were technologically great about the system can be attributed to Mark Cerny. But he was playing this section, and he, uh, he, he looked over at me and he said, Mike, this is as good as Ratchet gameplay gets. This totally makes up for the Inspector Bot segment <laughs> in Ratchet 2. <laughs> and you know what? I, I took that in the spirit I think it was meant. Because <laughs> really, there's only two ways you can react to that, right? You can either say, thank you, Mark, that's really nice of you. Or you could say, the work I did on Ratchet 2, uh, what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, I think as the last series uh, showed, the Inspector Bot was kind of, was really shitty. So uh, sure. I mean, I'm not. It's not my place to say, but it was pretty shit. The the reason why I think this plays so much better than the Inspector Bot in terms of puzzle design is, I I finally understand. I finally understood a tenet of Ratchet and Clank design that I didn't understand up until now, and that is, it is more important for the player to feel smart or to feel powerful or to feel good than it is for him to actually be smart and powerful and good. Uh, Interesting. It, uh, like, for example, the, the bolt cranks, right? Normally the way that you do them is by, by spinning the controller around, but all you have to do is hold them down, right? We just wanted you to feel like you were turning the crank without requiring great manual dexterity from you. In the case of the... Uh, in the case of like the clank segments and and this sort of gameplay, um, you're going through each room, you're identifying your goals, you're working through where the laser's supposed to be and everything. But in general, there's only one place the laser can go, right? Into that target. And the fact that the fact that the decision space was so limited meant that it felt really good and you felt really smart, but you didn't have to be you didn't have to have great lateral thinking skills in order to do it. Just one quick thing. I'm just going to interrupt you and then you can continue. Uh, that bridge was a Peter Hastings special. I think one of the few things he did on this game. Yes, he uh, actually... Because uh, as we spoke earlier, he was on resistance at this point. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I'm a, I, I actually remember when he did that. Yeah, he, uh, he wanted to do something for this game, and this was his one uh, sort of... The fact that the, it plays music as you walk across it. Yeah, he he went above and beyond on that bridge. But yeah, um, that was this was Peter taking a break from resistance to make this game. So just uh, to get back on track, Mike, would you say that this was possibly an inspiration for the laser beams in Portal? In Portal? Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I mean, right? This is yeah. first. I don't I don't think. Okay, hang on. I have to talk about this fucking spider. Okay, let's talk about the spider. This spider is the only thing about this design. <laughs> You're backtracking pretty quickly there, Mike. The spider was hell. Okay. okay? Uh, getting people to understand what the spider was supposed to do was really hard. So the spider is supposed to shoot a beam into that hole, right? Which you can't, you know, you can't angle it into this hole from here because we don't want you to cheat, right? The problem is you, you can't see the target, so you have no idea where the thing's supposed to go. And you're supposed to bounce it off this spider, you have to make the spider follow the laser up to that point, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, um, in user tests, kids had no idea what to do in this section. And we even had one after we put, you see the giant spider texture on the wall? Yeah. So uh, we had one session where none of the kids were able to figure out what to do in this room, and we had to tell them all what to do, right? Um, and... Uh, uh, when we asked them afterwards why they couldn't figure out what to do, they said, well, I knew I was supposed to place the spider somewhere, but I didn't know where. And I said, well, what about that big picture of a spider on the wall? And they said, oh, I thought that was just a decoration. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where, 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 uh, so I interrupted myself to talk about this. What did I... Yeah, I was just talking about where, uh, where did the refractor come from? So I think, I, I guess my question more specifically is... Uh, what inspired game, it? Well, every game we tried to have uh, new gadgets. I don't think we've ever really repeated any of our gadgets. We try not to. So, like the swing shot, we, we can keep around, you know, stuff like that. Right. So, like, w what are 
where how did the brainstorming come across and how did you end up settling on the refractor out the of ref you, you know i imagine there were plenty of ideas for gadgets at the time oh absolutely um the refractor was because uh on this game we were starting to run out of ideas that were <laughs> that were easy to to do right and uh we had pretty much done every zelda gadget that exists <laughs> except for light refraction. So it was still on the piece of paper. It's like, well, let's do light refraction, right? And because it's it, because it's ratchet, we decided to make it a laser beam, and the rest is history. Um, there's a secret here where you can redirect the beam. Oh, but I need magna boots. All right. Remind me to come back here when we get the, the gravity boots. I'm not going to do that, but I'll, I'll appease you and say that I will. All right. Uh, when we forget, when we get the gravity boots, right. everybody yell at Tony in the comments. <laughs> Did and we then... get anybody calling us out for not getting the uh, the quark figurine and meeting the plumber in the last game? We did, actually. Yeah. Sorry, uh, we didn't get the quark figurine and meet the plumber in the last game. Uh, oh, there was supposed to be a second spider challenge here. In the original version of this level, there was a spider here. And basically what you had to get him to do was walk all the way up this wall, around like that to the other side, and shine a beam in that way. And uh, it was fucking horrible. So we cut <laughs> it and put a platinum bolt there. That looked, but, oh, is that a platinum bolt? It looked like a nanotech boost. Uh, it looks like a bolt. Yeah, it's a platinum bolt. Okay. Or uh, whatever the fuck. I'm, I have a low resolution picture. I'm just going to go off of that. Hey, yeah. I know that. Oh, field. I know that, but hey, look, it's out. no, I, I, I don't care about that. Yet. I'm talking about the Violence. force field. I am looks very training. familiar. Oh, That's indeed, it was. Comic. Did you code that force field? I think I coded it a game ago in RC2. I think so. Or I think I stole oh. it a game ago. Somebody else coded it, but then I took Simple. it for my own. I really missed Big Al. He he's he's my favorite character in the Ratchet universe, I think. Clank, you speak nerd. It appears you have a feedback loop Clank, you speak nerd. God, Ratchet's still a dick. Well, he's always kind of a dick. What matters is he's not a dick to Clank. That's all that matters. Right. Oh, Tony, I think we're about to see some more of my work. Are we? Uh, oh, no, I thought there was a hacker puzzle, but I was wrong. Instead, we are just done with the level. I like that teleporter effect. That teleporter effect also uses Keith's shadow volume uh, effect, because it comes off of Ratchet. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think now is the time to talk about shadow volumes or later? No, I think because we're. I think we're done. I think we're about yeah. to go back to the Starship Phoenix. I think you're right. Uh, in which case, I guess that means we have to go. I think that means it's the end of the episode. This always makes me feel a little like the end of a Mister Rogers episode, where it was just like <laughs> sort of sad. <laughs> I don't right, think people wait. feel that way about it. I don't think. Yeah, I think you compare yourself to Mister Rogers. And I don't think that's how people <laughs> see us. Okay, neighbors. This was developer commentary. I'm Mike Stout. That's more George Bush, by the way. Really? That was... I didn't think I could do George Bush. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm George Bush. Uh, 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 there's no more impressions here? This is uh, the end? This is the end? Okay. Yes, this is the end. Ladies and gentlemen, I am George Bush's father. And I'm Tony Garcia. And we'll talk to you later. God, that was horrible. Let's do the whole ending again. All right. All right. For developer commentary, I'm Mike Stout. I'm Tony Garcia. And I'll check it ugh, one more time. For developer commentary, I'm Mike Stout. And I'm Tony Garcia. And we'll get you later. Fuck! Tony, you do it. <laughs> and for Ratchet and Clank, up your arsenal developer commentary, I am Tony Garcia. And I'm Mike Stout. And we will see you next time. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with me, dude? All right.